Greetings. Hello. How's it going? Wait, hold on. Let's get real big here. Really, really big. Huge. How's it going, everyone? Sorry, I'm not saying much. I'm just uh, reading the chat all of a sudden. It was me, it was the bird the entire time. No one believed me when I said it was the bird all along. But here I am. Thanks again to uh, Clo Mama, Clo underscore Des. She is our, uh, me and Prince's life 2D mama. Hello. Let me zoom out a little. This is also me. Legs are uh, under construction. Don't worry about that so much. But uh, I'm up here now. Yes. Revel in my in my cuteness. Here you go. Let me show you guys some of my uh, my emotes. Wait, hold on. Look, I'm angry, Burb. Also crying, Bird. <laughs> when you guys bully me and I have to cry. Oh, no. I could just have all of them on at the same time, too. Shoko has some, too. Look, she could do blushy. She can be sad. She has a cry. Uh, what else did she do? Hold on, I gotta turn <laughs> I gotta turn all these off now. Wait. Okay, wait. No more no more sad. There we go. Happy again. Alright, there we go. Go back to the corner. Back to the corner. Well, gosh, let me just say, man, I'm really surprised with the turnout. I'm very happy about that. Thanks everyone for coming. There's no one like, there's no Prince talking in my ear right now next to me. So it feels kind of weird talking to myself, but, um, but I'm glad you all like the model. Let me read some of the chat again, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I won't make Shoko cry anymore. Only if she deserves it. But she never does. She's really good. Good assistant. Wait, let me adjust my head a little more. Okay, all right, all right, all right, we're good. There we go. All righty, so. I have got three presentations, count them, three presentations planned for everybody today. Is everyone ready for these three amazing presentations? We don't have, we don't really have time to like play games or anything like, um, I don't have, I don't have time for like, to just go on for four hours or something. Cause we got, we're going to interview Mari Mari later. Me and Prince are gonna at about 5 PM PST. So stick around for that as well. Um, what else? Abby is also do. Oh yeah, yeah. So Misty is debuting tomorrow, and then Abby, sister Abigail, is also debuting tomorrow. So um, yeah. Oh hi, Abigail. There she is. Yeah, go check out Abby tomorrow too. I think she's gonna be like a few hours after Mistia. Something like that. Well, all right then. If it's all right with you guys, I'm going to start, um, you know, some debut activities. It's time to uh, do a little bit of a PowerPoint here. All right. This is a presentation that was uh, prepared for me. So 
Let's see. Welcome to a controversial talk about Enter. Okay. Why ducks don't make very good bass. <laughs> Why ducks don't make very good basketballs. Okay. <laughs> um I mean it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Uh, uh, giant hamburgers make much better basketballs. And uh, the skeleton is symbolic of the hungry skeleton, who is the, uh, the eternally skinny man who always wants to get bigger and, and stronger, and he swears he's going he's gonna to go to the gym and lift a lot, but he's, uh, he's just eternally skinny. Um, so yeah, I guess he's here to represent why a burger would make a very good, or a better basketball than a duck. But uh, let's let's keep going. What can we do to solve this problem? This is <laughs> the hell is that Garfield over there? Um, what can we do to solve this problem? I mean, since the dawn of time, people have been doing all sorts of weird shit with animals. You know, like in the Shakespearean days, they used to put um, they used to put bears in these giant pits. Like, they dig these holes that were, like, I don't know, 15 feet deep or something like that. I don't know. Maybe not that deep. Okay. How deep can a human dig a hole? I don't know. But these people would dig these holes really deep, and then they'd put a bear in it. And then they would, like, they would, like, bait the bear and do weird stuff with it. This was, like, during Shakespeare time. So, so likewise, we're bringing back that tradition of animal abuse. And um, I guess we're going to turn ducks into basketballs because we need to bring that back, you know. This is what COVID era has brought to us. We need to start doing these things again. Also, fun fact in El Dorado, remember the movie El Dorado by DreamWorks? Um, that scene where they're playing the game where they're like throwing the ball into the into the hoop in the wall, that was, that was actually supposed to be a duck, but um, because of these because of this controversy over the fact that ducks don't make good basketballs, they they replaced it with an armadillo. Yeah, that's right, J Raptor, JP Raptor. They put an armadillo instead. Mm -hmm. Space Jam, two. This is how we're gonna solve the problem. We're gonna bring Daffy Duck into Space Jam, uh, one point five, which is gonna be a direct to Netflix release. This will not be seen in theaters. Sorry. Um, and we're gonna inflate the like the thumbs up button on the Netflix counter, so it looks like a lot of people really wanted this movie. And um, yeah, that, that that's the beginning of the plan at least. But let's see what else we have in the presentation. Yeah, why should you take my word for it? Why should uh, why should Space Jam 1.5 direct to Netflix release be the solution for why ducks make good basketballs? Because my advice comes from experience. Because what the fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little bitch? I'll have you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs. And I've been involved in numerous secret raids in Al-Qaeda, and I have over 300 confirmed kills. I am trained in guerrilla warfare, and I'm the top sniper in the entire U.S. Armed Forces. You are nothing to me but just another target. I will wipe you the fuck out with precision, the likes of which has never been seen before on this earth. Mark my fucking words. You think you can get away with saying that shit to me over the internet? Think again, fucker. Ducks are basketballs. As we speak, I am contacting my secret network of spies across the USA, and your IP is being traced right now, so you better prepare for the storm, maggot. The storm that wipes out the pathetic little thing you call your life. Thank you for the follow. You're fucking dead, kid. Not you, but... I can be anywhere, anytime, and I can kill you in over 700 ways, and that's just with my bare hands. Not only am I extensively trained in unarmed combat, but I have access to the entire arsenal of the United States Marine Corps, Corps, and I will use it to its full extent to wipe your miserable ass off the face of the continent, you little shit. If only you could have known what unholy retribution your little clever comment was about to bring down upon you. Maybe you would have held your fucking tongue when it came to Dux's basketballs. But you couldn't. You didn't. And now you're paying the price, you goddamn idiot. I will shit 
I'll shit all. <laughs> I will shit fury all over you, and you will drown in it. You're fucking dead, kiddo. So, anyways, uh, yeah, that's where my most of my experience comes from. So I'm not just any I'm not just any old bird up here talking about stuff. And you might think that this is rude to say, <laughs> if the last thing wasn't, but. Banana ducks. Bipedal banana ducks. Yep. I think this image speaks for itself. This is, uh, if this image doesn't speak for itself, this is the reality we're going to start seeing if we don't return ducks back to their state as basketballs. You know, basketball ducks was a form of eugenics. It was a way of keeping ducks in line um, before that they start peeling and revealing their true selves as banana ducks. <laughs> Use code Sensei20 for 20% 20 off a hoagie at uh, Jersey Mike's. Uh, help, I can't get rid of this box. Yeah, make sure you guys use that coupon code. Tell them you want it Sensei's way when you when you order. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, there's a typo. I made a typo with my mouth. Um, it's actually Sense Sensei twenty. Make sure that you uh, spell that right when you go to the register, because now there's there's going to be a kiosk. There's not going to be like a sixteen year old there doing the sandwiches anymore. Thank you. Thanks for coming to my presentation. Glad you all enjoyed. Um, I'd like to thank Mistia and Prince for putting that together for me. Oh, well, there's one more slide. Congrats on, oh, you guys are nice. Oh man. Oh, there's, a, there's an alert on Prince's face as it should be. Oh. Oh, look at that. Look, dude, look at my hoagie. Is that a meatball marinara? Or is that like salami? Yeah, I mean, the the when you go to Subway on Sunday, you could get the meatball marinara. And uh, it's kind of garbage, but where else are you going to get a meatball marinara in this day and age? <sighs> yeah. Prince has a nice hoagie, though. He's got, like, some lettuce in his. I need some lettuce, too. Anyways. How much of that can a little bird even eat? You'd be surprised. Listen, bud, I take dumps bigger than me. All right. Well, so uh, what did you guys all think of that presentation? Hope you liked it. Teal Bomber, thank you for the follow. Who puts lettuce on a meatball marinara? Well, I think the other sandwich is probably just a normal Jersey Mike sandwich done Mike's way. Um, so now we go into our second presentation. Everybody, I got big news. This is huge. This is massive. Massive. We've been speaking to Domo. We've been speaking to... Uh, what the fuck's that guy's name? From Hololive? What's the CEO's name? Um, someone tell me his name. Yagu, Yago, Yagu, whatever. I've been speaking with him. I've been speaking to the CEO of Niji Sanji. I've been speaking to the guy that put BTS together. What we have for you is gonna blow your fucking mind. This is this is something that's never been done before by a VTuber, okay? Never. But before we get to the big news, first, you may notice that I yeeted my affiliate status. Why? Well, I don't like ads. I don't like Twitch taking our money. They take 50% of our money. So you're trying to be nice to me and give me money and they take half of it. And I'm trying to be greedy and take your money and they're taking half of it. That's pretty dumb. Uh, three, I really don't like ads. Pre-rolls piss me off and you can't just turn them off, okay? Either you have a pre-roll or you make ads appear in your video at some point or your, your Twitch. You're gonna have ads in there no matter what if you're an affiliate, okay? Um, and I want to strive to go beyond channel points and emotes as entertainment. Creativity thrives in limitations. 
Um, while channel points and emotes are super fun, and I've seen some channels do them really well, um, Kacho Hirogen has some of my favorite channel emotes or, or uh, redeems that I've seen in a stream. Um, all of his points before before Twitch yeeted him, of course, too. That kind of pissed me off too. That's also kind of why um, I wanted to associate with Twitch a little less. Yeah, Abigail, you can't turn off ads. You either you either don't do a pre-roll or you just play them later. Um, I don't know if I said that right, but but I'll show you the screenshot later. Um, so, anyways. When I first started doing this with Prince, I mean, we're kind of just playing games and being humble and we're avoiding the control of the Bogdanovs, like all VTubers. Um, but we eventually want to do more. We want to kind of do more content driven things. We want to do something more useful, something that people can actually like turn to um, as like some regular kind of either information or news or entertainment. So we're still working on that stuff and that and this is kind of like a good motivation to do more of that because I could see myself getting complacent with, you know, fiddling with channel points and having the emotes, even though the emotes are cool and you could still use them. They haven't expired yet, but they did send me the confirmation that they would get rid of that eventually. Let's throw some of my emotes in the chat. Oh, look, Kodaks showed up in my emotes. Let's throw Kodaks in the chat. I like Kodaks, he's cool. Anyways, next slide. So you may be wondering how to support. You may be saying, Sensei, I don't see the sub button, the big purple button. Well, you know, Twitch designed it that way on purpose. They don't want you to find out where to sub. So now in this section, we have support Hyoko Sensei here on stream, which is just where you could donate, you know, like a dollar or something, and you could make me do any dumb crap that you want. This is where I'll be a monkey and perform for you. Um, you know, th that's in place of like the channel point redeems. Like, I don't care how much you give me. I don't even care if you give me one penny on there. Like, if you're just... If there's something you want to say on stream or blast into the, the channel, that's cool with me. I think that, that part's really fun. And then there's a second link, sub to the channel here, which will take you to our page. All donations go toward making the stream a better place. Because, uh, real talk, I do have a full-time job and I make good money from it. And I'm comfortable and thankful that I have a job in this era. And so all the extra money that I can, I just pour into buying equipment and buying Photoshop and different resources and trying to get me and Prince to do some fun stuff. So anything that gets that comes into here is likewise going to go towards that too. We have subscription tiers. I mean, I don't have a ton to say about this right now, but we want to do fun little things. So if you have ideas, let me know. Like, okay, for the $20 a month, if you're that dedicated to give us $20 a month, um, I'm gonna force Prince to give you a personalized message in which he speaks highly of you. And I guess it'll be like once a month and he'll have to do like a live 2D video of it and he'll like pin it to his his Twitter. I don't know, I don't know yet. Something like that where he's gonna, he's gonna be forced to, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he doesn't know about this yet, <laughs> but um, this is his, this is Prince's way of giving back to the community. Um, and then we also have two in between. We have Royal Peasant, $10 a month, where you have Prince's attention, and $15 a month, Teacher's Pet, where Sensei will ensure you get at least Cs. Um, so in these two tiers, we could also do something for you. I just don't know what yet. Um, I want to make it like fun and worthwhile. Uh, maybe like I'll take the $20 one. Well, that one's pretty dedicated. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave that there. I don't know. I'm down for suggestions though, if you want to DM me. Um, don't put it in the chat because I'm not going to be able to see it. But if you want to DM me or email me or something, then uh, that is super cool with me. We are here to uh, make this a fun place for everybody. Um, so that's what we're doing. Um, subscribers will get added to the list. This list is now updated. I, I saw two of you guys subscribe before I even started, so I added you here. Let me show you that again. So yeah, um, if this list gets too full, then we're gonna have to uh, redesign it and do like some tiers or something, like something to to make sure that all you guys are seen. Um, and this is just a little thing. I mean, this is just when we're loading or when we're be right back or ending the stream. Like I wanna incorporate it a little more than that. Um, well, I'm pretty, poor. I think that guy, Brandon, goes by Brandon on uh, on Twitter too. 
I, th I think Brandon, if you're in there a username and you're in the chat, don't speak up because you're gonna dox yourself. <laughs> Just DM me and tell me and I'll, and I'll, well, that'll be obvious. Okay, I'm gonna rearrange the order. I'm gonna put a fake name in, okay, no. Don't worry, Brandon, we're gonna figure it out. Okay, don't worry. We're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. Um, you're not gonna get doxed if that's, if that's the case, but I'm pretty sure I saw you on, on Twitter with that name. Anyways. Uh, next. Now, for the actual other big news. The drum roll. I'm Brandon, actually. I'm Brandon Stetner. I was just stuffing the votes a little bit. I was trying to make it look like uh, there were subscribers when there weren't. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> we're all Brandon. Thank you, Sarah, for being brave enough to stand up and say that you're Brandon. Okay. So my book, Sensei's Wisdom Nuggies, is now available on the Gum Road site. Order on its own for $2.99. It might be free later. Or get it for free if you subscribe at any tier. Um, I have a thing, I, I feel complicated about like charging for like books and stories and fun stuff like that. But, um, but it, cause it is for the sake of the, the channel uh, I'm, I wanted to charge for it. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, you click the link in the tip section and you go to the, the channel there. So this is by Hyoko Sensei and Shoko Yokoyama. You guys have been wondering her name for the longest time. That's her last name. Oh, thank you, Larichu. Thank you for the raid. We're just going over my, uh, my book. So what is in this book? Is it self-help? Is it the ramblings of a complete bird brain? Will you ever be the same after reading it? You decide. I'd like to thank my lovely assistant for editing all my writing in here. I still haven't got used to typing with these wings after, even after all these years. Topics you'll find in Sensei's Wisdom Nuggies. Oh my goodness, thank you for your, all the follows. Mexican Phoenix, Yuki. Hitashi. Okay, sorry for not reading the follows, you guys. I'm just going through with the presentation, like with my, my blinders on. Um, topics you'll find in Sensei, Sensei's Wisdom Nuggies is, you know, things like how to fix your jacked up sleep schedule and cure your dopamine fried brain. Advice you don't want to hear, but maybe need to hear about college and the world of careers. Stories of real life people who you can connect the learning lessons to. Maybe a few hidden goodies too. Maybe a few lore, uh, few lore points. Maybe there's a little bit of lore about Sensei in there. Clocking in at just over 15,000 words, you will probably be able to read it in bits and chunks while sitting on the toilet or while waiting in line for your McNuggies at the drive-thru. Please do not uh, read books and drive. Okay. At only $2.99, this ebook is just under the cost of a six-piece McNugget set. All proceeds go back to helping Sensei and Prince do more good streaming and content creation. I think that's the last slide. Did you guys ever think you would enter a sales pitch at a VTuber debut? That's what I'm talking about. We're we're changing the VTuber community for the worse here. <laughs> Marketing ruins everything is uh, is an expression that marketers use. Um, so thank you for uh, still loving me despite trying to sell you shit. But um, but yeah, I did put a lot of work into this this little book, and I hope if you guys read it, you enjoy it and. Um, it might piss some people off, some of the stuff I wrote in there, but you know, whatever. Let me know about it. Uh, what time are we at? How many minutes has it been? Holy crap, 58 viewers. Right, let me just slow down a bit before I go to my last segment. Um, 33 minutes. It's pretty short for debut. Um, the last one I have is the Q&A time. Oh God, no, 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 wait, no, don't look. I'm ruining my own jokes, okay. But first, before we jump in there, uh, <laughs> thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, wanted to say what's up for a little bit. Thank you for the newcomers, those who have not watched me before. Those who haven't 
uh, seeing me. Thanks for thanks for showing up for this debut. Hope you enjoy the model. I'll, I'll go ahead and credit some people again. Clo underscore Desu is our Clo mama. She made my model. Um, there's a guy named Kumi0002. I don't think he has a Twitter really active, but he's the one who did the rigging for me. Um, and Prince, his model is on the way too. He's he's just it's just a matter of him setting up his debut by the same artist and same rigger. Um, and then Mistia Celeste has done the panels and the overlays. So here's that panel again. I mean overlay. So she did this art. She did the chalkboard. She did all this stuff for me. Um, she's really great. She's a very fast worker. I don't know if her commissions are finally open yet, but if they are, um, you should go book her fast before she fills up because uh, she does good work. She does fast work. And yeah, she charges a good price too. Uh, yep, yep, she is amazing. Yep. Um, what else? Oh, Ducky. Duh, Ducky did my logo. You guys see this logo here? Whoops. Oh God, not the screen. Wait, hold on. This logo right here. Check out the detail on this uh, chalkboard. So uh, Uppity Ducky made this for me. You guys might not have noticed all these little details on this logo before. Yeah, check that out, give that a good look. We've got a uh, Skylark in a bucket here. We've got Poggers Champion, which is what I think what the cool kids are saying. Um, we got Nuggies. We have one of these love umbrellas with two names in there. Hmm, if you know Japanese, maybe you can uh, figure out whose names are in there. I don't know though. Anyways. Oh, and then uh, the music of course is by my, my good pal who goes by Cleaner from Venus on Twitch, but he, rumor is he might be uh, doing VTubering soon. He might become a VTuber. Yep, yeah, yeah, Yuki. So Cleaner from Venus, who is going to be, I don't know if he's gonna keep that name. I think that's like, I think that's a, a, a reference to like a band or a group or something. So I don't know if he's gonna keep that name. But um, I will definitely be blasting him all over the place when uh, if he ever does get on that VTuber ring. Sounds like Sim music. It's dope. Okay. You'll have to send me some, some Sims music. All right, gamers. You're going to miss the Q&A, but if you got to go, I can't stop you. But thanks for stopping by. And with that note, let's get on with it. So I did a curious cat and I had you guys submit some questions and like good little nugget heads, you all submitted questions at the last day. So I basically put those all together. Oh, you gotta go be a responsible adult. That's horrible. All right, gamers. Thanks for stopping by. All right, here's, here's, the, here's the questions, the hard questions you've all been wondering about. Hey Sensei, it's me, T. Bison. This is anonymous, by the way. I have a question. Were you and Stinky OG always addicted to social media, or is this your first time heavily using social media? Hmm, hmm. Who else has wondered this? Midori Neko Nya, thank you for the follow. Yeah, well, if you've caught some of uh, Prince's gorilla streams, um, and he drinks a little bit, You'll hear about his war-torn past, his his time on the internet battlefield, where he's been um, he's battled pink, people from pink forums, and he's done he's he's moderated over weird little communities full of some of the most god awful people that are probably dead by now or in prison. Um, but the real answer is, we are scholars and historians of the internet. This is me on the left using my uh, Kindle Paperwhite to do research on internet cultures. Um, I go to knowyourmeme.com and I just uh, I just read all the memes on there. I'm a, I'm a big contributor on there. I put over a thousand hours into the site. Um, you've probably read my pages on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, we definitely didn't go to Encyclopedia Dramatica or anything like that. Um, and then over here on the right, we have Prince 
who um he's he's looking do you see what's going on here like look carefully he's doing meme alchemy right now this is meme alchemy so he's got like this copper pot that's going into this you guys watch dr stone it's kind of like that okay you know um so he's inspecting this meme he's doing like a quality assurance test and he's taking notes about what uh what type of shit will piss you guys off the most in twitter and it's pretty effective whatever he does so uh yeah and that comes from uh years and years years of of practice and study that's all it is you guys is just studying and constantly being on the internet yeah question two when are you going to let me out of the basement oh what happened oh there we go when are you going to let me out of the basement? Um, I'll decide after I go get a glass of water. Hold on. Anyways, so where were we? <clears throat> oh, oh yeah, when are you going to let me out of the basement? Um, probably never. You look really cozy down there. Um, I mean, you really look like you've got it figured out. You've spent um, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on anime figures. You have gone for the route where you... <clears throat> you know, you live, a, you live just above your means or like at your means, and then you spend the rest on anime stuff. Um, you could upgrade your monitor. I think you could upgrade your TV. Um, not like necessary, but definitely like, that would be nice. Um, I mean, that chair is probably fine. Um, chairs last a while. I think you're doing okay. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Just, uh, all right, Soft Alexandra, see you later. Hope you get out of the basement soon. Um, yeah, I think you're doing. I think you're doing fine. Whoever asked that question, um, I'm not gonna let you out yet. I think. I think you could go through a little bit more. All right. <clears throat> what are the top three books you would recommend? If you can't think of three, your all-time favorite is good. This is definitely a good question. Thank you for the second one. Um, the second part of that because indeed this is like when people ask you your favorite movie. It's like well, what the hell? I probably don't just have one. I can't even think of what I saw last week But I know I like movies. I've seen movies before. I'm pretty sure I just can't think of any right now. So, um, here's what I landed on All right, these three books Let me explain So the first we have infinite jest by David Foster Wallace um, David Foster Wallace gets a lot of shit the last few years, he was um, <clears throat> he was a big proponent for sincerity. I think what he says still has merit. Okay, so Wallace's thing was that irony is kind of like taking over the discourse, and um, it's kind of like I mean, we live in this we live in a society. We live in this meme society where everything is based on irony. By the way, this guy killed himself in like 2000 um, and he predicted Netflix and he also predicted a little bit of the society we live in now. We're, we're so entrenched in irony that it's very difficult to uh, understand sometimes when people are being sincere. Um, you probably get that feeling talking to me. I'm a, I'm a victim of that for sure. Um, <clears throat> and like irony can't create anything on its own. It's only a lens of critique. It, it, you use it to critique and make fun of and drag things down. Um, irony is good politically because you can use it against these like these institutions of power. If you use irony, you could use their own language and words against them when you don't have any power yourself. Um, I'm not a super intellectual scholar type guy, but that's just one facet of what he's about. The, the rest of what this book is about, this is like an 800 page tome. 
This thing is massive. If you walk around with infinite jest in your hand, people will think you are like the most pretentious kid ever. Um, and that's what I was when I was like 19 or so. And this book is just full of neurotic rambling with very big words, but it's also really funny. Um, there's also like 50 characters that you all have to keep track of. There's endless footnotes that you have to like, you'll be reading and there's a footnote and you have to go to another part of the book. And then you have to read like 30 pages and then come back to where you were before. Um, wait, what's Purim saying? There was a chapter on waiting. Wait, Purim, have you read this? Yeah, you attempted to read it. Yeah, um, it took me a while to read it, but once I read it, I felt like I was really accomplished. But it also it cured me of all my ne neurotic thinking. This brain, I mean, this book is full of people with like neurotic brain who overthink and get trapped in reflective labyrinths of mental introspection and they just uh they just like eat themselves alive in their own head and it deals with addictions of all forms like drugs and tv and uh, i don't know it's all over the place but i think it's it's a book that's becoming it's like a little bit more relevant today than it was when it was written it's one of those kind of things and uh, if you're down for the challenge it's really funny and rewarding you'll you're gonna learn a, a lot of words and uh i don't know I, I think I, the reason I put this book now is just because it like it really formed the way that I interface with the world and it kind of snapped me out of some of my neurotic weird thinking that I used to have uh, as a young uncertain teenager. Okay. Uh, next book, Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less. Um, I like this book because it just says we, we're all kind of guilty of doing too much you okay if you if you go to do your live 2d debut you might get worried about all the wrong things like okay what's what's the thing that you need you need a live 2d model and you need a stream that's it right and then you work from there and you figure out what you need whereas it's easy to get lost and go like oh well i need twitch panels i need overlays i need uh 60, followers on twitter i need this i need this i need that um it's very easy to get wrapped up in like the trends sometimes and not see what's important. And it's the same with like just streaming in general. You think like you, you look at what everyone else is doing and you go, oh, I have to do that too. Well, not necessarily. Um, and so this book teaches you to kind of just focus on only what's the most essential. And what happens when you think in the most essentials is you actually make more progress that way and everything else that's less important just fucking like it'll it'll find its way to get there it'll pick itself up like mistia was really great and made these overlays and panels for me and it and it's helped a lot but it, it wasn't necessary for me to do this but because i was focusing on getting the, these models in and, and doing all this stuff everything else kind of came naturally like it's not that stuff's not going to escape you if it's important. It's going to be there. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but this this is a good book though that will that will help you like reduce the clutter in your mind. You know, you know. Remember Marie Kondo, the whole life changing magic of tidying up. It's like that, but for your brain. It's probably the best way to say it. You will, yeah, sparking joy inside of your brain. There's probably a lot of thoughts in there that are cluttering things up, and you just you can let go of them. It's all right. I'm here for you now. You can let go of them. Yeah, I'm poor. I'm a big minimalist a little bit. Okay, and this last book, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at me. The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco. Crack the code to wealth and live rich for a lifetime. This sounds like such a scam. Oops. Go back. Go back. This sounds like such like a scam book or something like this, like something you'd make fun of. But, um, and I, that's what I thought too when I was first told to read it. But this this book will change your mind on how you think of money and what it means and wealth accumulation and all that stuff. This is not a book about, um, this isn't like watching Ty Lopez or some stuff like that. This is just a book on three different modes of living. There's sidewalk living, slow lane living, and fast lane living. Slow lane, or no, sidewalk is where you... Uh, you only have enough in your bank account to get by every week. And I know this is tough because of the way things are right now, but I mean, this is applied to a normal world, right? Um, 
If you get hit by a car, dude, you're out. If you don't have anything in the savings, you don't have anything to prepare for an emergency, you're you're probably gonna be fucked and you're gonna get crazy debt, okay? That's right, Ludneco, I am a millionaire right now. I just do all this for fun. Um, slow lane, that's good. That's like what I do right now. I'm at a, I'm at a job. I go there every day. I'm on the, uh, the path with the 401k. But that slow lane, it's gonna take me 60 years before I can enjoy that money and I can enjoy my free time. What a waste. And then there's the fast lane, which is where you basically understand what type of business scales the quickest and the fastest and makes you the most money in the shortest amount of time possible so that you can enjoy your time now. You basically put in the work for like five years and then you um, you can have this chance to excel and be on the fast lane. And you only gotta, you only gotta succeed once when it comes to this stuff, okay? Um, but you know, this isn't to say that I'm a millionaire, right? I'm doing live 2D and this isn't really the most lucrative job or anything. For me, it came down to a compromise of like, this is something I wanna do versus what makes the most money, right? Uh, but anyways, this book will change your mind of how you think of money and I highly recommend it because at the very least, it'll just change the way that you think of what you're doing with your time and how you're using it. I'm a big proponent of that. Fuck time wasting, okay. Since you're a bird, when you whistle, is it still cat calling? Wow. Uh, I respect women of all forms and I would never cat call. Um, so it's actually bird, bird calling. And um, because it's a little bird that's whistling at you, you're not disgusted or grossed out by it. You actually welcome it and you, and you love it when I do it to you. Okay, next slide. How smart are you? 15. Moving on. Who's the green lady? Well, I'll give you a straight answer. This is Shoko Yokoyama. She's 27 years old. She's mute for reasons. She could type 100, and wor 100 words per minute. Her my anime list has over 500 titles. Uh, she's bad cook, but she tries. And she has known since a long time. I uh, hope that said something. Yeah, only 500. She's a little bit of a pleb, but you know. And then here are some of Shoko's embarrassing baby pictures that were taken a long, long time ago. Yeah. And here are her different outfits, and she had her different phases where she dyed her hair different colors. Yeah. Anyways, what's the lore? How did you meet Shoko? Uh-oh, everyone's been asking this question. Well, if you read Sensei's Wisdom Nuggies, there might be a little bit of a, a lore point in there. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. You'll just have to go find out. Who knows? <laughs> Book plug, yeah. Uh, what made you want to become, <laughs> hey, it's my debut, I could, I could plug my books if I want to. Riri, I was gonna, I was, oh, I was so close to doing like a video, like a video where it's just text on the screen. Hello, you may be asking yourselves the same question over and over. Why don't I know anything about Shoko? Well, today, in this quick 20 minute presentation, we're going to be showing you everything you need to know about Shoko. Um, yeah, I was, I was almost going to do that as, um, as a thing, but I like the PowerPoint. Um, another question, what made you want to become a VTuber? Well, there are some, there's a lot of voices on the internet that I hear. They told me things like build an audience. Okay, there's a book called uh, Never Eat Alone. I don't remember who, the, who wrote it, Keith something. And uh, he talked, <laughs> yeah, he's all right. He's always like this. Um, and they always talk about, they're talking about how an audience is your support network in the 21st century. Oh, thank you, Ophidia. Yeah, Claude underscore Desu is my model maker. Um, an audience is your safety net in the year 20, 21st century, whatever the hell you, century this is. Um, companies aren't loyal to you. 
companies are gonna fire your ass. So uh, instead, you should try to make content and you should build an audience and, and know people. Um, you don't even have to be like a rock star, you know, you just gotta have your own circle. And that's kind of what I wanna do. And I tried that in the past with a different avenue and it wasn't really working. So I came to VTubing instead. Um, what else made you want to become a VTuber? Okay, well, this is a little boring, but this was this, this, okay, so when I was doing my other thing that wasn't really working out, I was really confused and lost and I paid for, <laughs> I paid for this personality test, the strengths test, and um, it was super worth it because what it said about me was my top five strengths were these things. I'll spare you the details, but it basically says that I like to deal with problems, I like to make things happen. I like to be strategic. I like to learn stuff and I can go with the flow in just about anything. And um, I realized what I was trying to do before, the reason I wasn't super motivated with it is likely because most of the things were not aligned with my strengths. So I would say that for all of you guys, figure out what your own strength, strengths are and work towards them. Don't don't focus so much on your weaknesses. Don't, don't try to improve your weaknesses. You don't want to be like well-rounded like Mario and Mario Kart. You want to be like Bowser who like, you might be slow to start, but when you fucking are going and you hit someone, you hit fucking Toad, he goes flying off the fucking track and he goes into that part in Wario Stadium where he falls off the ramp and he's not coming back from that, okay? He ain't coming back from that shit. You want to be like Bowser. You want to double down on your strengths. So find out what your strengths are and double down. And I found that streaming and live 2D, because I like anime stuff, kind of worked the most in these areas for me. And um, it's been proven well for me. Like this is something the most I've kept up with something for a while. I haven't stopped doing this and it's been pretty fun. Um, another reason, I would be lying if I said there wasn't another reason that I became a VTuber. Um, so Prince had told me about Hololive well before the English generation came out. And I didn't really, I was like, yeah, okay, these are kind of funny. That's nice. I don't want to read subtitles though. I don't really watch streams. Um, but then the English ones came out and I watched them. And um, Amelia just had like, I just felt like me and her were like the same person a little bit. I know all the simps say that, Jesus. But like, dude, I was like finishing her sentences in my brain. I was like, dude, she knows exactly what I'm fucking saying. And um, um, I found out where she began before Hollow Live, and I saw her transformation from a small Twitch streamer into what she was now. And I was like so humbled. It was like it was like everything that uh, these guys over here were telling me about like building content and starting from nothing. Dang it! Go back over there. Um, like you have to, you just start humble, and as you go, like you're gonna figure it out. And that's exactly what this girl did she just like started with these very humble beginnings with like crappy little avatar and she just kept going and upgrading that avatar and that's why like when i see people on twitter all like oh can i rebrand my can i re-debut can i like can i update my model like are people gonna feel weird like yeah do it like you're an underdog still do it just keep doing it just just um you've got you've got all the yeah just rebrand three times five times in the past three weeks just like prince um i just realized sensei part of shoko's hair is transparent uh-oh well that's uh her hair is so healthy that it's see-through that's what's going on vimi so anyways um yeah amelia was very cool i like i like what she's about and uh she just does her own thing and i'm into it and i was like dang dude can i just put myself out there the way i am and hope that um hope that it works so yeah yeah she gave me some courage there and what else you guys you made me become a vtuber what the hell okay um and that's not just me being like corny and being like oh my god you guys i want to give back to the community and um this was like in in like i said in past efforts to try and do things online i've been in some communities that are fucking dull that are full of people that don't really care, that are all just like follow for follow without it, without a shred of actual caring. And this this community though is much better. Um, it's really cool to pop into each other's streams and see what you're all about. It's very cool that we're all into the same dumb weeb crap together. Um, definitely, I was very 
pretty lonely, wasn't really doing anything. Um, I wasn't even talking to Prince that much during this time. I wasn't doing shit, and I was just very, very alone in my mind. Um, so I'm glad now I have this community, because now I'm way too busy, and now I have way too many people to talk to, which is a good problem. But also a problem still, I still want to interact with everyone. Anyhow, can you teach me something? Wait, which part of Shoko's hair is transparent? Oh, the back of her hair. Oh, gosh. All right, we'll figure it out after, Vimi. Can you teach me something? Also, that's right, Onishan. Mistia, can you do a shout out for Onishan? That guy is great. He's a wholesome dude. Okay, that. Okay, let me explain that real quick. Okay, so like, when I was on Twitch, when I or on Twitter, and this was before Prince had gotten on Twitter, because I kept bugging him for weeks to get on there, and he hadn't gone on yet. Um, so I was venturing on my own out in this community, and I had like an avatar with no model or anything yet, and um, I jumped into his stream, and he was one of the first. Oh, your chroma key is really dark green, and it's taking the low value out of the hair. My chroma key is like a light blue though. I think the blue is meshing with the green. Anyways. Um, so yes, Onishan's one of the first streams I went into and was like, depending on how this guy reacts to me, is gonna like make or break my experience with this community and how I how I think about it. Um, yeah, but then I did pink and then like the edges had all like, there were pink on the edges. Um, and then when I talked to Onishan and him playing Apex, he was just immediately cool and responsive. And uh, he was actually laughing at what I was saying. And I love it when people think I'm funny. So I was like, I was like, this guy's awesome. And then we just connected offline a little bit. I mean, on Twitter and kept going. And I was like, dang. And then, uh, and then soon I met a bunch of random people. When I did the, probably when I did that Among Us, where I said, let's just play Among Us without without streaming just for for shits a lot of you guys came in and responded to that to that tweet that was really cool yes momoka you should always laugh at what i say people who laugh the lard the loudest at my jokes are probably my best friends uh yes yes bro tell me what subjects you want to learn i will learn it and do a stream you can probably co-host it with me too i think that'd be a pretty cool idea i'm into this idea like you could you dm me a topic that you want to learn about and then we could go do some <laughs> we could do a book report how about that we do a we do a report on it and then we present it in a stream or we just go on to a stream and we start googling stuff together trying to find out the answers to whatever your questions are i, I don't know it would be funny yeah anyways Do tiny bird wear pants? Hmm. Yes, they do. What is your favorite school subject? Probably books, literature, language arts. Uh, I'm, I was just, I don't know, like I didn't, I'm really bad at all school stuff, so the only thing I was good at was reading books. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, writing essays on them. And uh, the only good that ever came out of that is captured here in this quote by John Gardner, who wrote Grendel and on moral fiction and some other stuff. And he says, art deals at its best with what has never been observed or observed only peripherally, darts from what is to what might have been, asking with total interest and sobriety such questions as, what if apple trees could talk? What if the haughty old woman next door should fall in love with Mr. Powers, our mailman? The artist's imagination, or the world it builds, is the laboratory of the unexperienced, both the heroic and the unspeakable. So when you... Oh, thank you for the raid, your local Yuri. Um, so in fiction, when they make you... In school, when they make you do essays and interpretations on what you've read, it's kind of just a practice in critical thinking. It's, it's kind of like you... T the, the, the book is like one giant scenario that could have happened, and you're going to make suppositions about it and deal with it and look at it like a puzzle and and do whatever and um i like that problem solving and it, and it feels like like the more i read like i was i was pretty weird as a kid and socially distant and shy and um i would use books as like a substitute to try and understand people and i think it actually worked kind of okay i fooled people all the time with with uh 
with my social skills. They tell me all the time that that I can that I can when I try I could be pretty pretty good socially, but I blame that all on just reading lots of books and um, just filling my brain with all kinds of scenarios. But uh, that also that also kind of warped my brain because um, the anime did the same thing a little bit. So yeah, people who read literary fiction are way more empathetic. Yep, that, I think that's true, Porum. Yeah. Um, hop into some literary fiction, deal with some feelings, um, don't worry if it takes you a long time to read those books. I mean, I was a really slow reader, but, um, you'll learn some things about, yeah, you'll learn some things about people and you'll, and you'll start to realize, you know, that old saying, art imitates life, life imitates art. You'll see that, you'll, you'll read a lot of books and you'll go out in, into the world and you'll see, you'll understand why people act the way they do. And, you know, like, literature is very rarely just, like, a bunch of made-up shit. It's it's actually, like, you'll, you'll, you'll find that a lot of authors are straight up doing autobiography in their books. And, and they're writing things as exactly as they experience them. There, there's nothing really fancy about it. I think Hemingway had a quote. He said, uh, there's nothing to writing. You just sit at a typewriter and write. That's it. Um, anyways, moving on. This is a question a lot of people have asked. What type of bird are you? Well. Oh. Mm-hmm. There we go. I'm a neutral good type of bird. I'm guided by my conscience rather than any formal laws or traditions. You may occasionally break the rules, but it's generally in service of the greater good. Notable peers. Jake the dog from Adventure Time. John Smith from Disney's Pocahontas. Wonder Woman. Albus Dumbledore. <laughs> And Glenn from The Walking Dead. Thanks, BuzzFeed. Stellar work. When will you and Prince be getting married? Mm-hmm. The big question. <sighs> did you just, uh... Did you just steal my wedding surprise? My, my marriage vow from me? My proposal, I mean? No, you didn't. Me and Prince are in uh, something like an open relationship, okay? While so Prince is here, people don't understand that me and Prince have this kind of relationship. Um, so there are people who uh, get hurt feelings when they realize that Prince likes me just as much. Uh, yeah. So we won't be getting married. We're not into that. But we like to keep it open and we like, uh, we like it when girls chase Prince. <laughs> what is your favorite type of candy? Gummy frogs. I haven't had them in a long time, but I think I'm going to go find some today or tomorrow. I do like me some gummy frogs. Is that a what? Is that a what star? Go on, star. I'm waiting. Fweet gummy? Yeah, that is fweet gummies. That's right. Ah, <clears throat> oh, ducky. Yes, yes, the mall always has them. And they also have the gummy sharks all the time. All right, Ophidia. See you later. Thanks for stopping by. Hmm, I wonder who asked this question. What protein content does Sensei have? Mm-hmm. Well... Is the person who asked this question in the chat? I'm gonna go grab some water again, just in case they, they stop in. Thank you for the follow. Furikonaru, Furikonaru. So, we looked at the data, and what we found was shocking. What we found surprised us. We analyzed Sensei, myself, and here's what we found. We didn't find just his protein count. We also found his carbohydrate and his fats breakdown. Here is Sensei. In one serving, in one cup of Sensei, there are 390 calories. 
33 grams of carbs, 19 grams of fat, 23 grams of protein. I'd say that makes a pretty good lunch. Some some balanced uh, macronutrients right there. Yeah. I'll let you uh, screenshot that, Tori, in case you need to do some research. Yeah, it's very easy grab and go noms. Yep, 100%. Yeah. Well, you know, though, carbs are good. It depends on your, uh, if it fits your macronutrients, if it fits your macros. No? All right. Next question. What's your favorite subject to teach people about? I would say lately, lately, I've been learning that I, I do like teaching writing stuff. Uh, me and Mistia did a stream the other day, if you guys were there, where we took some prompts that you guys had sent in and we made up a random story and we ended up writing like the whole outline of a story from beginning to end. And um, it's actually pretty solid. Um, but that's like, you know what I was talking about earlier with fiction and, and the laboratory, the unexperienced, like that's exactly what this is. It's just like you have your pieces, you have your laboratory, you're adding elements, you're changing them. When you add elements, you got to rearrange them. You got to make sure that they all, that they all fit together. Um, and there, and there's like a, a sense of like when you got to change stuff and when things don't fit and how to fix it. And, um, it feels like all my, all my years of binge watching anime and reading manga and reading books is like all coming to fruition when, when I'm sitting there piecing a story together. So, um, yeah, this was really fun. If you guys, if someone wants to write some story, something or something like that, let me know. We'll do one of these again. And there's going to be more to that too. We just did the outline, but I hope I want to do some more like into the actual writing part of it. Uh, what's your favorite type of content to stream? I'd say just some good old video games. Um, and this is me. That's right. This is a real picture of me, you guys, that I found on the internet. And uh, I've told this to like Misty and some other people that, and maybe I've said it on my stream in general, but like when I was younger, I'd always watch my brother play video games. And it was always fun to like watch and, and have him hear him commentate and stuff. And uh, then when I was getting older and playing those games, um, he was like, yeah, I'm going to go outside and skateboard. So then I was just left alone playing the video game by myself, going through the different things that he went through, kind of hoping like he would have been there to see it. And this, and this isn't me bagging on him. Okay. He's going to do his own thing. Right. Um, this was, this was a, this was a me problem. And, um, lately though, before I started streaming, I was really trying to avoid video games. And, and every time I loaded a video game up, it was very solitude, very lonely experience. It was kind of just a lot of solitude. Um, very big mood playing games, like playing Death Stranding by myself was a journey and very cool despite the game's flaws. Um, but um, once, I, once I let myself into the idea of streaming and playing video games, like going basically full-time, part-time with video games instead of avoiding them, all of a sudden it was like everything made sense it was like dude i don't like it's not that i don't like video games it's just that playing them by myself sucks um so i like to play like single player games um like platformers puzzle games um games like rust and minecraft where you could just mess around with friends and and wacky things will happen and you never know what's going to happen i don't really care for multiplayer competitive games ask onishan i'm not a good apex partner um so yeah, that's the kind of stuff I like to stream. And then also to some of the other stuff, like the, the writing was really fun. And other things like that, if I could discover those, that would be fun to do more of that. Uh, next question. Do you eat bird seed? Boyd seed? No, I eat popcorn on a stick. Yeah. Just want you to get a good look at that. Yeah. So good. Popcorn so good. Yeah, just popcorn on a stick. Nothing else. 
Anyways. Why does a bird need glasses? It's a good question, good question. Because bird with glasses is wise. Hmm. Bet you never thought of it that way, huh? Yeah. All right, this is a, uh, whoever thought of this one, props to you. Whoops. Uh, what is the most embarrassing piece of clothing you own? Hmm. Let's see. Here it is. Here it is, you guys. This uh, shirt from Omo Cat. This Omo Cat shirt that I bought. Uh, I have a thing for like the the artsy pixiv arts of like schoolgirls and and like simplistic art forms, and they're in like, and, and they're in these like scenic little paintings or whatever. I like that aesthetic. Um, and I waited in line at Anime Expo, at the Omo Cat booth and this guy was rude to me because i didn't know there was a line and i was all grumpy and i waited and i went and i bought this shirt and like three others um and then i i went home and i put it on and i was like i can't even i can't wear this absolutely not it also doesn't fit that well but um no i just can't get past Maybe I'm just guilt. Maybe I'm just feeling guilty about it because I'm a pervert. I feel like people will stigmatize me for wearing it when I go to the grocery store. But uh, I'll probably like pin it to a wall or something with some thumbtacks. I don't know. I haven't thrown it out yet. I mean, that's that's a testament to that. Okay. Uh, what's the craziest, most outrageous thing you want to achieve? You ready for this? What are your guesses? skydiving spelunking in dark caves IRL Minecraft jumping over a volcano open a KFC you're gonna guess that I already that I already said I did it I said I already did it blah 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 that I already I can't even say what your sentence is anymore my brain's fried boxing match with Prince on live TV that's a good idea no, you sillies, I just want inner peace. Gosh. Anyways. If your life was a meal, what kind of meal would it be? Mm-hmm. Well, it would be a McDouble. The McDouble is the perfect meal. Nutritionally balanced. There's nothing quite like it. The McDouble. This is not a McDonald's sponsorship. Um, I just really like the McDouble. It's just the perfect piece of food. Nah, nah. What's your favorite food? Hmm. The McDouble. I'm gonna go ahead and say the McDouble. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Shoko's all tilted. I'm gonna, I'm gonna recalibrate. There we go. Not to mention her hair is transparent. Anyways. How high is your IQ? Hmm. Well, Mia and me did a study back in October 27th. Um, and what we found is my IQ was only 160 and hers was apparently 230. Uh, I don't have the link to that. Test. Yeah, she's big brain. Yeah. Hey guys, so I tried to get my certification for substitute teaching. Well, I did get it years ago. And uh, you have to do a test in three categories in like reading comprehension, math, and I think the other was like science or something. It was some other subject. But either way, I did great in two of the subjects, like amazing in two of the subjects. And then um, the math one, I got one point above failing. And that was enough to give me the the cert. Um, and then when I, when I went to go substitute teach, in one of the very first classes I taught, it was fourth grade class, they came over and they said, Sensei, Sensei, we don't know how to do the math from yesterday. And I said, all right, let's see it. 
and it was a long division problem. It was something like two divided by 325 or something, okay? There's gonna be some remainders in there. And uh, I tried to do it on a piece of paper. First, they expected me to go do it on the board. And then I went and did it on a piece of paper by myself first. And then uh, they were saying, guys, Sensei doesn't know how to do the math. <laughs> Uh, so I'm not, yeah, it was, it was really bad. Hello, Sky. How's it going? I was just telling everyone how I'm a horrible substitute teacher. Yeah, so I did the substitute teaching gig for like two weeks before I gave up. It was, uh, it was really bad. Oh, okay, that's the last question. Endo. Came just in time, Sky, but I'll check the curious cat real quick just to make sure that no other questions came through. Uh, no, but I got followed by Monkman. This guy followed me. So that's cool. That's newsworthy. He's following a lot of people. Sorry if I doxed you in the chat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's probably Brandon Stetner. Um, that's all I had planned for you guys. That's all I had. What do we do now? Oh, you know what? Let's, let's fix this uh, transparency problem. All right. Let's see here. Hey Sky, look, hey look, Sky, look at look at my my emotes. Sky, look. Did you see it, Sky? Look. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Saluna. Sensei, you should answer the age-old question. Which one? How long have we known each other? Hmm, well, Prinsu, like I said, uh, that question may or may not be answered in my in my uh, Sensei's Wisdom Nuggies book, now available for purchase in the t tips and subscription panel down below. Uh, but it's been a long time that me and Prinsu have known each other, and um, the way you know you're besties with someone is that you can basically not talk to that person for a decent amount of time. And then when you come back to them, they're the exact same as always. And you, you guys don't need to do any catching up. I mean, you got to catch up logistically. You got to know where they've been in space and time, right? Um, but you need to... <laughs> I'm not a sellout. Um, uh... Lunky, I'll send you a book. Okay, don't worry. Um, so, uh, yeah, I could, I could, there was, there was a couple times on and off where me and Prince didn't speak too much because we lived in different areas and we're doing different things. And he almost got ensnared by, uh, an evil queen from another kingdom. Do you remember that Prince? An evil queen almost ensnared him in his trap and her trap. Uh, her trap was to try and distance me from him. And, um, one, I was a fool for not realizing it and trying harder. And two, he was a fool for letting it happen. So we were both fools. Um, but luckily he got over it. She, um, she, uh, committed arson in another kingdom, let's just say, and he found out about it. So, um, yeah. And then we, and then we were, we started talking again. Uh, all right. Bye Onishan. Peace out. Anyway, let's mess with these chroma keys. All right, we're gonna go for that magenta. Ooh, let's go for the soft purple. Let's see if this does anything. <clears throat> the problem is that Shoko has like all the colors that uh, are usually chroma keyed. She has green and she has blue. So like, what are you supposed to do with that? 
Is there any transparency? I think this is actually working. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think this I think this fixes it. Oh no, but look her shirt. She's got a ghost shirt on now. Chroma key too strong. If she's on a green screen, does she become bald? Yeah, she becomes like just a face. See if you if you reduce the smoothness, it gives you uh, it takes away the ghostliness, but then you've got the outline. So that's what I'm like dealing with. I might have to take it back to uh whoosh, see you later. Bye. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It also messes with the brightness and contrast and stuff. The coloring of it. Um So yeah, I don't know you guys. I gotta figure it out. She has a nice chin. Thank you, VTuber Master Chef. She does have a nice chin. Oh, I'll do the green so Tori can see what it looks like. Wait. Wait. Oh my god. Wait a minute, this isn't... Well, the edges... Wait a minute, this isn't horrible. This actually might work. Green might actually work. You guys. You guys, green might actually... Surprisingly, green might actually work. Well, there's a little bit around Sensei's... Hmm. Hmm. Wait, she's like see-through right now. Look, her face is see-through. Oh, there she, oh, there you go. There you go, Tori. This is what you're looking for. How's that? Ghost Choco. That's the lore. Oh, deep fried. Oh, that's powerful. That's incredibly powerful. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, this is really good. This is probably my best one. Oh, this is like she's old and dead. Let's be a uh, Danny Phantom Shoko. I like this. This is cool. Oh yeah, I'll have to figure that out. Sensei is looking pretty vibrant though, look at him. I mean me. I speak in the third person, okay. Amazing. You're right, maybe she's cute with white hair. Oh, wait, Yuki, you're just being biased. How do I know? That's just your personal bias a little bit. Yeah. That's right, Sky. Cute girls are cute indeed. Now we're on the beach in our old age. I don't know you guys. I'll figure it out after. 
One of you V2 professionals can uh, hit me up if you would be so kind. But let's not be in the void of space. Now we are uh, outside your house. Sensei is here because he's wondering why you haven't turned in your homework. The school told him that uh, the school told him that you were that you were slipping up lately, and that he needed to come and visit you. Sensei berates you outside of your house while Shoko winks at you. Wait, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Momoka, I'm using VTube Studio and the iPhone. That's right, Star. You're going to do better on your next homework. That's okay. Shoko will wink at you again. Or she'll do the, the Pixar blink where she does one eye first and then the other. Struggling to get that wink out. If you cover one eye, you could you could cheat, but it still looks weird. Yeah, Shoko doesn't know how to tie her tie properly, but it's okay. Does Shoko suffer from neck pain carrying sensei all day? Yeah. My ass is pretty fat. I do have that dump truck ass constantly on her head. So, uh, but she's good though. She does the proper neck, neck exercises and neck strengthening. Sarah Fricks, thank you for the follow. Um, Yeah, uh, Prince knows a lot about uh, neck exercises. You could ask Prince, he'll show you how to work out your neck. There was like a month straight where all he was doing was lifting heavy weights from his head. He's pretty good about that. He taught Shoko a thing or two there in that regard. That's how she's able to carry this dumb truck ass on her head. Yeah, Prince isn't uh, friends with any females. The only friend he, only female he's a friend with is uh, is Shoko. Everyone else is a love interest. My voice hurts and I must prepare for Mari's stream. We're going to interview Mari in about an hour and a half. Same place, same channel. And I will not be using my live TD because uh, she won't be using hers. So I'll just be using a static ping. Yeah, we say ping. Me and Prince are, are using ping. PNG just takes too many syllables. So we're saying ping. We're just gonna be using static pings, but I'm gonna be, this is gonna be my new static ping. So uh, when you guys wanna drop the pong. Oh, is that an umlaut on top of those O's, Lunky? That's like, I don't know. There is a place in Sweden called Ledinga or something like that. I don't know how to say it now, but I was staying there. Where's the link to buy your book? It is in the tips and subscription. That would be funny if no one actually asked where the link for the book was and I just and I just said it pretending someone asked. But no, VTuber Master Chef asked. It is in the tips and subscriptions. Getting the book is basically a tip. And it comes in PDF, 
EPUB and MOBI formats. That means you could read it on your computer. You could read it on your tablet with a, uh, a uh, lithium app or some other kind of e-reader. You could, if you have a Kindle, you could drag and drop it on there. I'm gonna tweet a picture of what it looks like on Kindle. It actually looks pretty nice. Um, so yeah. Yes, Saluna, let's chat more. I keep seeing you in my in my feed more. You know how like you know how like you okay, we followed a bunch of people on Twitter, but the algorithms don't actually show you those people. So it feels like I haven't seen Saluna on Twitter for like months. And then all of a sudden I start seeing her everywhere the last week. Like I must have like replied to you once and then all of a sudden you're now in my feed. But um yeah, the Twitter algorithm makes it so that you just don't even see people sometimes and it's so that's so depressing because sometimes I follow people because I'm like, I'm, I'm curious what they're about and I want to see what they tweet in the future. But then Twitter doesn't even show me their tweets. You just posted a magnum opus, Selena. Oh, the bell. That would get messy, though. I don't know if I could handle all those notifications. I get mad anxiety with all those notifications. things for days yeah notif go burr and then I go into the system wide settings and turn off notifications for Twitter honestly but if I had more time holy shit I'd be on Twitter much more Prince does a lot of the heavy lifting in real life and also on Twitter Alrighty. Well, I said I was going to leave, but now I'm going to do it for real this time. So thank you for everybody who showed up. Thank you to all those who are still hanging around. Um, I'm, I'm happy of everyone that showed up, man. I'm still, uh, I still got a little bit of imposter syndrome sometimes. So it's hard to believe that there's people here hanging out. See you later, everybody. Thank you, Mace, for the congrats. Good to see you here. Oh, hello, Latte. Oh, and thanks for everyone who was pumping me up. That's that's a huge help too. Yuki's been, she's been retweeting me like crazy. And then Sarah literally made his, his stream title since they debut tomorrow. That was great. All you guys that have been pumping me up. Thanks a bunch. Yeah, Cherry, you're someone that I want to watch more, but you just always stream while I'm at work, so I can't do anything about it. But I see that you're active. I'm just not able to make it. Thanks a bunch, everybody. I hope it was worth it. I hope you enjoy the book plugs. I hope you enjoy my question and answer. And uh, yeah, let me know if there's cool stuff you want me to do or you want to collab on some cool stuff. I want to I wanna start doing more effort content instead of just gaming. So. Alrighty, who, who should we raid? Let's see here. Get my fat head out of the way. Well, look at that inception. Well, we got Eleonora. Should we go? Should we go get her? Yeah, let's do it. She will be the chosen one. Oh, I almost forgot the the in her name. Eleonora the Bat Queen. Okay, got it. Here we go. Raid message. Just say just say Nuggies raid. Nuggets raid, whatever you want to say. Here we go. 
Bye. Thanks again, everyone.